Let's talk about virtual franchises. Uh, we'll be talking about physical franchises in another section, but ex examples of virtual are the online or the work at home type of franchises like Mary Kay, Pampered Chef, um, Norex, Essential Oils, uh, Beachbody would fit into this category. Most people are familiar with Amway. That's been around for 30, 40, however many years. Um, so often these are multi-level marketing opportunities. And so there are a lot of strengths to this approach. And if you look at the slide, um, you know, when you are part of a larger organization as an entrepreneur in this sense, you get to leverage their brand recognition, the marketing they create the systems they provide, the training they provide. It's a low barrier to entry. Usually you don't have to invest usually under a couple hundred dollars to get started on something like this. So it's very attractive to many people because there's a support system. But along with that, there are some weaknesses. Um, anytime you have, you're working for another organization, there's less freedom to use your ideas. And yes, you can use some, but at the end of the day, it's not about you, it's about them. They, they want you to use their brand. They want you to use their uh, products, their marketing, their training. And so that can create a lot of freedom for you, or that could be limiting. And it's more based upon your personality type and that kind of thing. Um, some find that to be a comfort, and some find that to be a constraint. Uh, a weakness also is often in these organizations, you're training entry-level to mid-level um, experience. Uh, employees and so often at that point in a career or in pursuing something there's not a lot of skin in the game however you can overcome that by being extremely motivated right to continue learning and growing because these kinds of structures provide that for the people um, one of the big weaknesses I see is if your friend joins, who do you buy from, your family or your friend? I mean, this is, I've had this dilemma. You know, you've got a cousin that sells Mary Kay, and then you have a friend that starts to sell Mary Kay. Who do you buy from? And for some people, this is not a problem. They can buy from both, or they choose one of them. But most of us don't have to make these choices with other products we buy, right? We don't have to base it on a friendship or anything. We base it upon, I am going to Target to buy this because I need it. So... That uh, can be a weakness to this kind of setup. Now, um, how are you unique? Well, that, that's something else that goes back to the friends, family. If everybody's doing it, then how are you a different Pampered Chef consultant than the others? Um, you're all selling the same product for the same company. You know, it comes down to really good customer service and providing some other information or something besides that product because otherwise, you know, they're not different from each other. Threats also, and I put this as a joke, kind of, but I've experienced this. Do you still have friends? I have been involved in different multi-level marketing opportunities over the last 20 years. And sometimes people say, oh, I've got something great I want to share. And, they, and then you go and you find out more and then you sign up because there's this hype. And then you find out you, you're signing up for this massive obligation and you're not comfortable sharing it with friends. And it starts to impact your relationships. So you have to be very careful with that. Now, some of the newer ones I've noticed are a lot easier in that respect because it doesn't um, force people into certain amounts that they have to purchase every month. And if they do, it's something that's fairly low and they get a discount on it. And it's something they can actually use. I'd signed up for one for products that I didn't even use, so it was just a waste of money for me. Um, but there's opportunities in this as well, and that is that you can grow, you know, based upon how hard you work. And especially if you come in at the ground level, there can be great opportunities. Um, that's where the real opportunity lies, actually, is at the ground level. And you get to leverage the brand. So these are some things to think about with virtual franchises.